اللهم ارزقنا القناعة اللهم حببنا في صلاة الجماعة اللهم احشرنا يا ربنا مع النبي المصطفى صاحب الشفاعة اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I seek refuge from antics of shaitan I begin with the name of Allah the most gracious and the merciful I bear witness that there is no other God deserves to be worshipped except Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, you are welcome to another edition of A Moment with the Companion, sponsored by the Companion, an association of Muslim men in business and the professions. I am Tajuddin Balogun, your host for this edition. In this episode, the topic we are looking at is the Sabbath breakers, and the lecturer is Sheikh Abdul Fatai Abdul Majid. Sheikh Abdul Majid is a former national president of the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria, MSSN. He is a former president of the Companion, Lagos District. Sheikh Abdul Majid is also a former president association of Hajj and Umrah operators of Nigeria. Our lecturer today is the Chief Executive Officer, Kibla International Services Limited. Sheikh Abdul Majid, you are welcome to our program. Bismillah. Inna alhamdulillahi na'amaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu ayyual ikhwan wal akhwat fi kulli makan Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Our praise up to the end of time. Belong to Allah, the ever living and the eternally besought of all. May the peace and blessings of Allah continue to resonate upon the soul of the best among humankind. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In today's uh, episode of our discourse, inshallah, I'll be looking at Sabbath breakers. The Holy Quran is filled of food with a lot of stories, history, and similitudes. The stories, the history, and the similitudes given, the essence is actually to serve as instruction, information, and for people to draw lessons. One of such is going to be taken therefore from Surah Al-Araf, that is chapter 7, from verses 163 to 166. Of course, there is also another reference to the Sabbath breaker in Surah Al-Baqarah. That one is verses 65 and 66. Of course, it's the detail of it is found in Surah Al-Araf. And that is why I will therefore start with Surah Al-Araf. Allah Azza wa Jal states, Bada Udhu Bilai Mina Shaitanu Rajim Wasa Alhum Anil Koriyati Leti Kanat Adirat al if you had do na fi sabti is tati in hita no hum 
yawma sabtihim suraha wa yawma la yasbituna la ta'tihim kadhalika nabluhum bima kanu yafsukun let me pause there let us look at what Allah Azza wa Jal is saying there. Said, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahallahum, ask them about the township, about a people. Ask them about the town that was by the sea. When they transgress in matters of Sabbath, that is Saturday holiday. When their fish came to them openly on the Sabbath day and did not come to them on the day they had no Sabbath. Thus we made a trial, and we should note that. Thus we made a trial of them, for they used to rebel. In other words, this particular history, the setting is actually a continuation of a discourse about the Israelites, what violations, what sins they've committed, and what instructions were actually passed to them. In this particular instance, the instruction was on the early day, which is the Sabbath day, nothing must be done. In particular, they must not go a fishing. So, what then happened was that day, which is the Sabbath day, the fishes will come out. In fact, they float on this on the river to the extent that you can easily pick it with your hand. And then on other days, the fishes were not coming out. Allah said, We did that. Based on our authority, just to test them, just to serve as a trial for them, that yes, our laws must be obeyed. That was why. So let me continue. It said, Why is Kalat O Matu Menihum Lima Taiduna Kauma Wahu Muhlikum Au Mu Azibu Um Azaban Shedidan? That is the next stage. A group of people came and they started warning people about ensuring that the symbols of Allah are respected and fulfilled. But another group said, wait a minute, what's your business there? These people are designed to be killed. So when, and when a community among them said, why do you pray to a people? whom Allah is about to destroy or to punish with a severe torment. Why, again, why are you talking to them? Why don't you leave them to be destroyed? Why don't you leave them to be tortured? Let us listen to the reaction from the other group. In other words, you will see that from this narration of the glorious Quran, there seems to be three groups. The first group are the Sabbath breakers, the people who go a fishing on a day when they are supposed to be serving God and be resting. The second group were not breaking the law, but also feel, why do you disturb yourself? These people are already, they are going to be destroyed after all. So don't bother your head about them. That was why they said, ah, why is called that? many whom? Lima Taizuna Koman. Why are you preaching? Why are you advising? Why are you admonishing, sermonizing people? Koma, Lahumulikum, that Allah will destroy. Why do you bother yourself about how or we punish them? Why, why do you bother yourself about the people who Allah has destined will be susceptible to Azaban Shadidan? Their punishment. So, what therefore was the response of those who are calling, those who are warning? They said, Kalu, ma, Kalu, 
ma'adhiratan ila rabbikum this is just to serve as excuse for us that we are no part of them and that we did our duty ma'adhiratan is to give an excuse ma'adhirat ma'adhiratan ila rabbikum wa la alahum yatakun and that perhaps they may change from that cause to perdition they may change from the cause to destruction and become people who fear God. We are doing that because we know that is our duty that we should do. So the stage is therefore set. Group one, lawbreakers, sinners. Group two, not breaking the law. Oh, but I don't care whatever happens to them. And group three, don't break the law. Have a change of that. So this is what the next verse has actually informed us. So what happened? When they have forgotten what they were reminded about. When they have forgotten what they were warned on. They continue to violate the laws and continue to commit the same and heinous crime. So, and we save those who were actually stopping them from committing sins. And Jaina, we save. We allow them to reach salvation. And Jaina, Ledina, Yenauna, and Isu. We are dholamu. We now cause, we now seize the wrongdoers. We we seize the sinners. We have been but with terrible, terrible, terrible punishment. Be makano yefsukun because they were rebels. They were warned. They did not listen. However, in this section of this particular discourse, there is now a kind of the issue of the lawbreakers settled. The issue of the warners settled. Because Allah saved the people who are warning, calling them back, Allah saved them. Allah destroyed those who refused, who were rebels. The argument now came. The first position of Ibn Abbas was that the two last groups, the lawbreakers and those who, who did not mind whatever happened, they were destroyed together. Of course, there is argument as to what happened to those who did not do anything. But majority of the scholars are of the view that those who also allowed them, who did not bother their head to warn them about the consequence of what they do, they were destroyed alone. And what finally happened to them, Allah said, Falama atau amanu hu anihu. When when the perdition that was we what they were one came to them, what was it? Kuna. We just said it doesn't it doesn't cause us anything. Allah as I was that it doesn't cause us anything. Kuna lahun kuno kiradatan khashin be hips, be monkeys, despised and rejected. And therefore, they were turned to monkeys. Of course, there are those arguing whether it was real monkey, whether it is a, a philosophical. The Quran says here, yeah, Allah, as I was just said, be ye apes. And therefore, they were turned to monkeys. Let me quickly go to verse, uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 66, because 65 is almost a summary. 66 now said, and we made their end a warning that this story that we have narrated to you of the lawbreakers, of the sinners, and those who stopped them, and those who did not care, we make it to be a warning. For who? For those who were present when the thing happens. Nakalen, wama khalfa, and for generations to come, that if you also see 
this kind of people committing sin, you don't bother, or you are calling, what will be the consequence? So, nakalan, fadaana nakalan, lima be na yadeya, wama khalfaha, wama iza, wama hisatan, and an admonition, an admonition, lil mutakin. Therefore, the Quran has spoken. Allah Azza wa Jalla has informed us of what happened to the Sabbath breakers. But what lesson do we derive from it? Today, heinous sins, terrible sins. In fact, things that we've never heard of. Men marrying women. Men, rather, marrying men. And women marrying women, lesbians, and you call them. So, that, and today there are laws in the so called advanced countries and even in this country, too. So, I mean, people now will want such laws to be brought here. But we have read through the Quran. I, at the beginning, I said the Quran is filled with stories. Just to, and Allah has said, just to tell you the lesson of what has actually happened. That was what caused the perdition of the people of Lot. Because what happened, men were marrying men. They leave the women aside. But today we are talking of LBGT. And it's becoming laws that people are talking. In fact, you even see men marrying animals. You also see women marrying animals today. But let me come closer home. Killings, bloodlettings, and so on and so forth. That Allah, as I would tell, in Surah Al Ma'ida, has said to take a life, to take a life that you are not supposed, you don't have the right to take. <laughs> it's like taking the life of the entire world. That is in Surah Al Ma'ida. And that to save a life. It's like saving the life of the entire world. You today in the social media, you see people even selling human eggs at 20,000 naira. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore bloodletting across the globe from almost all parts of the country today. If you are not killed based on kidnapping, killed based on uh, terrorism. So that is another side. Then we go to corruption. Money that has been stolen, that, has, that is still being stolen, even today, it hasn't stopped. Yet, yet, it is those money that has caused the death of so many people on our roads. The money meant for those roads that were not, that were not spent judiciously, that were stolen has actually made so many people to lose their lives. Or the money meant for the health care of people in the hospitals. You see people dying because, because of, because of just, just 1,000 naira. Because they couldn't afford it. And the money meant for such things has actually been stolen by people. On and on. So you see people committing terrible... It is here that I've also heard of people... People turning, bringing milk, woman milk, camping women, becoming pregnant, and then the milk that is taken out is now being exported to other countries. So the extent that there is a video clip on it that is also sent to that one who will say it is that kind of, it is the milk coming from that particular lady that I want and is being exported from this country, so many. Therefore, when you see that kind of terrible, heinous sins being committed, we have a duty as Muslims. We have a duty as believers because Allah said, let there arise out of you a band of people inviting to all that is good, enjoying what is right, forbidding what is wrong. They are the one to attain Felicity. That is taken from Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 104. But are the Muslims 
playing that role today? Allah also won. In Surah Al-Anfal, that is chapter 8, I guess verse 25, that hmm, you should fear fitna. That when people commit sins and there is nobody to stop them, it's not going to be limited to them. Our duty, therefore, is that the Muslims should continue to call attention and ensure where they are able. If you follow the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you can change things in three ways. You change it with your hand, or change it with your thong, or you change it in your heart, and that is the weakest. But today, I don't see the Muslims as doing that. We need to come out. See, because when the, when, when the partition will come, when the destruction will come, it will not be limited to us. It will not be limited to those committing it. And finally, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in an hadith, he gave a, a, a narration of a set of who are on a sea voyage. They are traveling. So certain group were in the upper deck. The other group were in the lower deck. But those in the lower deck, they will have to go to the upper deck to be able to draw water. Oh, one of those in the lower deck said, ah, why do you have to go through this trouble? Why don't you allow us? Just, just talk to those up. Let us bore hole into this ship. When we bore hole into this ship, then water will visit all of us on our beds. We don't even need to fetch it again. And the prophet said, if those in the upper deck, if they fail to stop those in the lower deck from carrying out their dastardly act, all of them will perish together. We are therefore paying for years of silence. We are paying for years of not pointing out that this is wrong and standing to say it's wrong. I pray ours will not be like that of the Sabbath breakers. But we should know. We should know that Allah again has enjoined on us. That is in Surah Al Maida, verse 2. Help ye one another. Support ye one another. Encourage you one another in doing good. And obedience to Allah. You should encourage one another on that. But, do not encourage one another in committing sins and breaking the laws of Allah. Therefore, the silence, the deafening silence that we see today from Muslims must change. And that is why we should commend the sponsors of this particular program that the Muslims, they needed to do more. May Allah accept it as Ibadah on our part. But we should know Allah's laws must not be broken. If we break the laws of Allah, Surely when the time is ripe, Allah, as a wajal, will take decision. May Allah save us from destruction. So on that note, I say, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Sallu ala al-Nabiyyil Kareem Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen We thank Allah for making it possible for our lecturer, Ustaz Abdul Fatal Abdul Majid, uh, on the topic for today, the Sabbath breakers. There is no doubt that the lecture our Ustaz has delivered is very educative, informative, and very, very instructive. I pray to Allah to continue to increase our Sheikh in knowledge and preserving for the Huma. Dear viewers, you are still watching a moment with the Companion, sponsored by the Companion, an association of Muslim men in business and the profession. This is the end of today's edition, but join us, dear viewers, tomorrow, inshallah, 
the same time, the same station for another interesting topic. Until then, I remain yours, Tajuddin Balogun, saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's one of the uh, major organ of the organization that is designed and put in place to physically be in charge of the assessment, the collection, as well as distribution of zakat. Collection from the people that are eligible to pay zakat and then to administer the payment and disbursement of this zakat you know, to all the people that qualify to you know um, basically receive zakat in line with the injunction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as demonstrated by Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All Muslims have to do five things. Who knows what they are? Shahada, Salah, Zakat.